Thanks for joining us again on another Command Set Go, where Jeffrey and I talk about food and what we're drinking at the very beginning to shoot the crap. And then we get going on to Command. Jeffrey, how's your day, buddy? Good, man. So do you golf? I, I noticed the hat. Are you a, you know, a golfer or you just act like one on TV? I I golf, but I suck at it. So I don't know what where that category, what is that? Where does that put me? Uh, everyday person, I guess. What, what, what do you shoot? What's your uh, what's your average eighteen? I'm just gonna say a hundred. Oh, you're better than me. I'm about one ten, one eleven. The fact that you know that means you golf more than me. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm any better. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. All that matters, Jeffrey, is that we're decent at command. Yeah, we're just realtors that hack the golf course, but we can sell houses, I guess. So we can afford to hack at the golf course. There you go. I love it. Well, let's get into this. Today we're going to be talking about the everyday on command. We're going to be going through what your day should look like when you jump into command so you know where to start, you know how to use it, just so that you make sure you're using it the right way. And if you like it, it was my idea. If you don't like it, it was all Jeff's idea. Yeah, and AJ told me how to do it, so, so we're going to AJ, AJ for well, <laughs> AJ, AJ, if you're listening, it's your fault, bro. Uh, here we go, buddy. All right, where do we start on command, buddy? You've got the um, control. So, um, I'm going to open up uh, you know, our window here. And now there's – if your coach tells you something different, follow with what your coach tells you to do. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of preface that. Okay. Cause I, I don't hey, want to hey. get in the way of your coach. Did you get in trouble already? <laughs> no, like, you know what? but if, if you're like, if you're a kid like me, I just need to be beat once. Okay. You know, it's like, you just got to be beat one time and then I'm never going to poop on the ground again. Okay. <laughs> That's just kind of how it is. Right. So uh, you never want to, uh, you know, so I'll just say it that way, because, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you want to eat the frog in the morning, right? So you want to, you know, do your legion, stuff like that in the morning. And, and so what I'm kind of walking you through is just kind of the, the general day in the life of a KW agent using command, uh, if you will. So um, <clears throat> the first thing that I would say to do is that you want to go inside of uh, notifications here. Mm -hmm. And just kind of just look through and clear out your notifications that are lead generated, you know, so lead gen focused, right? Because the first thing I'm going to come in the morning, anything that's a, a contractual issue, you know, so like, like here, I got a compliance return, um, you know, from a, from an opportunity. So that kind of stuff I don't necessarily care about. Um, first thing, you know, the first thing I want to do is see if there's any leads that I need to follow up with. So I'm going to spend my time and energy. Mm -hmm. um, very first thing is looking to see if any new leads have come in, anybody's texted me, those sort of things. Now, a big question I get a lot is, um, how do I get notified? You know, if, if I'm doing this, where do my notifications go in that? So if we go to, uh, if we go to uh, answers, there's a really cool, uh, little diagram here that really explains everything for you <clears throat> where it says applet and applet is just a name for what these guys are. Okay. So okay. these are like little apps inside of command. So these are the applets. So if you want to say like, Hey, you know, if, um, if, if somebody uh, signs up, uh, you know, if I get a new Facebook lead, how am I going to be notified? Um, and how you're going to do that, you would look at your contacts here and you could look where it says, you know, new site registration. You're going to get an email mm -hmm. notification. You're going to get a command notification and you're going to get a Kelly notification. Now, <clears throat> one of the things a lot of people say is Kelly isn't giving me, I'm not getting notifications from Kelly. Okay. Um, and what I would say to that is you need to go inside of your settings. Now, iOS and Android those settings are a little bit different, uh, but you're going to go inside and um, for iOS, you don't open up Kelly to change those settings. You go to the actual settings of iOS and click on notifications and then go through and you'll see Kelly down there and you want to make sure everything's turned on. Okay, for me, 
I'm the kind of person that I don't just need one notification. I need all the bells and whistles to go off for me to kind of stop and, and see what's going on. So um, however that works best for you, um, I would do that. So that way, you know, if a lead comes in, you're notified and you know how to take care of it right away. Um, so I'm gonna put this into the chat here. Um, so we can have that. You guys can reference that. So just kind of <clears throat> remember, and remember all this stuff that we, that we go over, uh, it's all inside of answers um, and you'll be able to see all that information there. Okay, so this is where you're gonna do all that information. So I'm gonna go through first and clear out my notifications. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into contacts. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm gonna go into contacts is there's, there's a feature inside of contacts where a lot of people there's there's a lot of different crms that say that they um that they can project when a person is going to buy or sell okay um and if if that were true if a crm were to be able to say hey we could project within you know we could say this person is five times more likely to buy or sell I can guarantee you that Gary would write a check to that company as big as it possibly would need to be, right? Um, <clears throat> and so what most people, what most of these guys are doing is they're looking at data sets. They're still looking at and say, okay, if a person does this, this, and this with inside the software, we think they have a higher percentage of, of a transaction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, so with inside a command, what we would do is we just go to contacts and this last contact, it means anything that you've sent out to them. Okay. So any, you know, your text message, your smart plan, all that sort of stuff is going out. Last visited is their interaction with you. Okay. Gotcha. So what I would do is I would sort by last visited and say, okay, what's the last time somebody had visited uh, or interacted with my app, website, all that stuff. I want to go to last visited. And these would be the people that, now these are all TLs and OPs and stuff like that. So don't, you know, don't worry about that stuff. But um, this is where I would go in and do that. <clears throat> David makes a huge, really good point. Um, can we bring David in for a second or no? Is that, does he raise his hand? Yeah, we can bring him in. Hold on. David, raise your hand and I'll bring you in so we can talk really quick. So Thank David you. is, uh, is one of our market center tech trainers. Dave, you can uh, you can talk now, buddy. Hello. What's up? Look at that sexy mug shot, David. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to turn my camera on on this. <laughs> <laughs> don't even worry. We got you on audio. So um, yeah, so that, David. Any changes you make uh, to how your uh, command contacts view is, you can always save that as a smart view. Um, and I've set up a couple of my agents here in the Santa Monica office to have like a new lead smart view that shows um, anybody who was created within the last two days sorted by um, how they're visited. So Jeff's going to show you here uh, how to manage and create smart views. Yeah, this is this is great. Um, and so you can you can create ones and then you could you could uh, say that. So like here, you got some Kelly ones to say, who should I call? Shows contacts that you've not contacted in the last 30 days. Which is um, so these are just some pre-done ones for you, right? So these are ones that don't have neighborhoods associated with them. Um, they're not associated with any sort of campaign. Um, a lot of those different things. And you, you could create your own smart view. And this is what David was talking about, how you could say, okay, I'm gonna create this as, you know, my, call these guys or sorry people first you're fired right. Jeff you're fired right uh save as a small smart view and then save so once I've got this set up the way that I want I can even customize the columns and say hey I want you know to see different things in here um, I could click on last message see if I hit last message um it's going to go towards the end here but I can drag um this guy over I thought I could Maybe I can't, um, or is it one of these? Go you customize. Have to customize the columns first. Yeah, right? I got to do this part first, and then drag it up. There we go. That's how you do it. Apply, and now it's going to be over here. So once I've got this 
the way that I want it to look, then like Dave was saying, I'm going to go in here and create a smart view, um, call it whatever I want and then save it. Uh, and so then that will be my default smart view if I click this. So every time now I come inside of contacts, it's going to look exactly that way. So solid pro tip there, David. Appreciate David, that. that was that was really good, man. I love that tip. <clears throat> Listen, you don't have to be the smartest guy or person in the room. You just got to know the smartest people. So that's what I do every day. Damn, you, <laughs> you guys make me look good. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so going into context again, that's where we're going to kind of go in and, and do that. And I'm going to go and you know, call everybody, follow up, those sort of things. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my campaigns. And so I've called, you know, I've, I've cleared my notifications. I've gone through and called, you know, my most active people. And then I'm going to go into my, my um, dashboard here and I'm going to put, uh, where do I have that? Right here. Uh, I'm going to put this into the chat. Okay. And this is, um, Um, this link right here is so you know you want to run Facebook ads and you got them running, and then once the Facebook ad somebody registers as a lead, what do I do with them? And so this is every morning when you come in and you're processing your new leads. Now I'm going to assume that when that lead you know registers, that you're go ahead you get the notification on Kelly that you're calling them right away. Okay, I'm just going to make that assumption. Uh, a lead registers on Facebook. It gets a Kelly notification, you pick up the phone and you call them. Now then the next, that morning, you're gonna come in and you're gonna say, okay, I've got three new Facebook leads. I'm gonna click on them. I'm gonna see the lead here and then I'm gonna add them to a smart plan. Um, and, and so that would be the next one is any leads that have registered from my campaigns to go in and add them to a smart plan add any tags, you know, anything like that that I need to do, I'm gonna grab them and start them running um, how I want them to. Now, a sidebar to this is inside of commands, um, <clears throat> what I would suggest you do is whenever you make a smart plan, um, that's, you know, more of a long-term sort of plan. So say like, you know, a Facebook follow-up, I would recommend that you do three individual smart plans. Okay, and I, I would have one that's a text smart plan, uh, an email smart plan, and then an activity smart plan, because you're going to have your smart plans. I'll show you what I mean here. If we go to smart plans, oh, click the wrong thing here. <clears throat> if we go to smart plans and I go to library and I search uh, Facebook, and we've done this before, but We'll find all the, the smart plans that are Facebook related. And if I go to filter, you know, say I want, uh, you know, at least a couple hundred people using it. Um, you'll see uh, Brian uh, Leverett here. He's created three different ones here. Um, and these three, he's got one for calls. And if you look at these steps, it's simply just make the call and it gives you the script to say in there. So you're gonna get a notification that says, hey, Jeff, you know, here's your list of everybody that you need to call and here's a script to do it. So as you're working through that list, you know what you're gonna say, what you plan to say and go through that list. Um, and then the text messages, it'll send those and then your, your emails. And so I suggest you break those, those three out. Okay, so whenever you're doing a smart plan that's lead follow up like that, I would suggest you break them apart. And I, these smart plans, um, they're great. There's obviously thousands of people using them. And, um, and so I would do that. Now, something um, to do is, is you can see a lot more people are doing the emails and text and they're not doing the phone calls. Um, it's so, so important for you to make a phone call. Uh, it's so important for you to call your leads, okay? So I would go through my campaigns and I'd add them to a smart plan. Um, and then the next thing I would do is go to my tasks. <clears throat> now, 
you're gonna have you can have tasks that are associated to contacts, which that's what this is here. And then you have opportunity tasks. So these would be tasks that um, I have for an opportunity, or if I go past due, I see if there's anything that that I didn't do, or here's ones that are coming up. So um, we can kind of go a little bit deep on this, though. Uh, we can cover this. Uh, I think we're going to cover this in the next few weeks. Um, but opportunities is probably, I think, one of the more powerful tools inside of command, and yet one of the most underutilized tools inside of command. Um, and so, but your tasks that you have associated with opportunities and the tasks you have associated with contacts, this is where you're going to come in. And the reason why I put this at the end is I want all mm -hmm. my more lead generated stuff in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this is all more follow up stuff. Got it. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you on that, Jeff. I think one thing that that agents don't do is they don't follow up with their for opportunities that are coming in that are new first, right, which is exactly what you were showing. Let's call those people that just came in. And then let's go to the tasks that you set for yourself to follow up with after. And that's how it should be every day. Now, when you connect with people, I think that's where we forget that there's another step on there because we, we just assume like, well, great, I connected. Let's say it's you, Jeff, I connected with you. I'm talking to you. You sound like you're interested. Um, maybe I, I, I set, set you up on a, on a home search and then I kind of forget about you, right? So I need you to do two things there. One is make sure you set a task date based on what they're telling you. So if I'm talking to Jeff, my goal is to find his motivation. Like why, why was he searching in the first place, right? Let's see if he's just browsing. What does that really mean? Does that mean a year, two years from now, right? Once you determine his motivation, then I think that's when you start tagging it the right way. But you have to have the right tags. Like Jeff, you came in looking for Malibu for a three and a half million dollar home. Then I'm like, okay, I got it. And, and Jeff, are you looking to move next year or what's going on? It's like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm retiring next year, right? And so it gives me a better idea of time frame, so I can tag like, all right, 12 months out, maybe six months out. And then if it's a great contact, like the Facebook lead that we got, which uh, we closed for 13.1 million off of Facebook, uh, if we connect with them really well, like what else are you doing? And I think that's where, that's where we stop and, and, and forget that we can connect deeper. One of the things that we do, Jeff, is we actually use handwritten, where if you and I connected well, I'm going to take that another step further, right? And I'm going to send you a, a handwritten letter that says, hey, Jeff, Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I'm going to be searching for you. And I just uh, thank you for taking that extra step and spending 30 minutes with me on the phone to tell me how we're going to, uh, how your future looks here, right? The point is that we don't do enough of that. We leave it just online. Mm -hmm. and you need to connect deeper, right? And you'd be surprised how many people are like, whoa, just they remember us because we took the time to send them something over the mail. So don't ever, don't ever forget about that step. It's really important. It's, it's part of why we close uh, online leads at such a, a high rate. So um, can you take that just deeper for, for a second there? I'd love to see a little bit more about, um, about that website you just had shown, um, but really kind of in you know, so we can talk about, hey, you need to go in, you need to clear tasks, you need to clear some of those things, but um, can you kind of give a, a 30,000 foot level sort of view of, of a lead comes into Tristan's system, right? What is that, how, how do I get from you register to, maybe not all the way to the handshake and I'm handing you keys, but kind of just that, that, that follow-up sort of process that you guys have? Dude, great question. So, one of the things that we do from the very beginning is we're reaching out to people to find their motivation. So the conversation goes like this. Hey, Jeff, it's Tristan. How are you doing today, man? He's like, oh, fine, fine, great. Uh, well, look, you visited our website through Facebook, and I just want to make sure that we're 
sending you the right homes, even if you're not looking to buy anytime soon or ever. Like, oh, well, Tristan, I'm just, I'm just browsing. I'm just looking. I saw something on Facebook and uh, I just clicked on it and it took me to your site. Awesome. Well, look, I don't want to spam you either. If, even if you don't end up ever buying a home, but at least I, I want to send you some stuff that you like seeing. I mean, I'm always, I'm always looking at homes on the beach too. So would you want to be on the beach or maybe towards the top? Where are you looking in Malibu? I don't know. If we did end up doing something, it'd probably be somewhere around Pepperdine University. I'm like, oh, okay, well, why Pepperdine? What's happening there? It's like, well, we got, we've got two kids that are looking to go there, right? Now I'm getting into their motivation, right? And everyone's going to tell you they're browsing. So you have to get through that first. Then I'm looking for their motivation for them. For Jeff, I want you to tell me like, all right, well, maybe a year from now, maybe two years from now, because my kids are going there. Now I've categorized you. This is how long it sometimes takes for people to transact through Facebook, but mm -hmm. I'm building a relationship. And that's what my, our agents know. We're building relationships through these opportunities. And that's, that's the mind shift there. This is why, you know, two, two and a half years ago, we get this Facebook lead. They say, oh, I'm just looking, I'm just looking. And then we're like, okay, we know what that means, right? And so we keep on sending them homes. We call them, we text them. 23 days later, they say, oh, well, you know, this one on Venice looks really nice. They go in, they like it, put in a cash offer. We're in escrow. Two weeks later, hey, the home next door is for sale too. They end up buying that while they're in escrow with this one for two and a half million. Fast forward two and a half years now, we just closed with that Facebook lead, a 13.1 million, and we put their Venice homes up for sale, right? One Facebook lead is going to be 24 million in volume. Not bad. Right? So it's all in the process, but we're treating it like relationships. So we've got processes, we use the smart plans to follow up, but we treat everybody really nice. I, I like honestly like connecting with people and, and writing them notes, man. If you have that ability to just connect it and bring that closer to you, now you're just not another real estate agent talking to them and maybe texting them once in a while and saying, hey, I wanna to touch base. Jeff, I'm just touching base with you. I'm touching your bases. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's, so we can use software, we can use companies like you would use that, that handwritten company. Um, you can, uh, simply just use a Sharpie with some thank you notes so you can write it bigger. So I'm not having to, you know, use a pen to, to write a super long letter. Cause if you're anything like me, you know, you did, you did what you had to, to get through high school. Um, <laughs> you're not the best at grammar, you know, That's uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, all, all my, all my listing descriptions, uh, you know, start with it's gorgeous inside, you know, all that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, but it's, uh, we, we have a mutual friend, um, Ben Fairfield and, and he does something that is just genius. He has, um, like send out cards, you know, you know and those, those, there's lots of different, those kind of providers. And so anytime anybody recommends him in a Facebook group or any of that kind of stuff, we're realtors, we, we have access to people's addresses, right? That's it's, we're professional stalkers, right? And so if, if somebody's out there that's, that does something for you, just kind of says a, uh, something, it's so easy just to go on. You could send them a thing of brownies or whatever. Like I, I don't have send out cards. I'm not, uh, there's no, I don't have a referral link for you, but um, just those, I think just those gestures go a, a very, very long way. And he can pinpoint um, those little gestures to transactions um, that, you know, commission checks. Um, Cassandra, what was the name of that, that, that company, Tristan? Um, Henry, Henry. Henry, let me put in the link here. Got it. Um, let me grab that. So that's, yeah. that's a, that follow-up is a, is a huge thing there that you're talking about. Well, that's the key, that's the key to our success, right? That's the reason we're, we're doing this. We want to actually close on these, but if you don't, if your day-to-day -day doesn't look like what Jeff's showing you, where you set that routine to call up the new leads and then the follow-up with the tasks, you're never going to get there, right? 
that's step one. Yeah, and so when you're inside of a contact, um, inside of a contact tasks right here, this is where you can come in and you can create, uh, you know, a new note, a calendar event, or I can create a task and I can say, hey, the task is, you know, call Jeff. Uh, is it, you know, an all day thing? Is it going to be due at a certain time? Um, what's the description? Do I have a link? that you know is associated with that excuse me with that task all that stuff is in here so you know if you're if you're a phone prospector you know let's say you've got you know mojo up over here or you got you know whatever dialer you're using and and then i've got my command open in the next window and i'm just adding tests like, okay hey i need to send them this or i need to do that inside of tasks this is where that that's where that's going to live so i love that um, this is where you can see all that stuff um now, uh, and we, we could touch on this um, uh, because personally, I think it, uh, opportunities is one of the least uh, used areas and has the most potential. Um, and what I mean by that is if you can get this, if you can get opportunities set up correctly, it will really help to automate your business. And what I mean by that is, let's say we have Facebook leads. Okay, I have a Facebook lead and they come in, I put them on a smart plan and then now all of a sudden, you know, I, my smart plan says to call them, I call them, I have this conversation with them. When I have a two way conversation with somebody about real estate, I'm then going to take them and I'm going to create an opportunity with them. Okay, a lot of people think that or most people think that opportunities is strictly just for uh, processing your paperwork. They treat opportunities kind of like dot loop. Does that make sense? Yeah. They man, treat it kind of like a green sheet or something, right? You know, in KW speak. Um, and so opportunities really it's, and that's why the name was, was chosen as an opportunity is this, this individual is an opportunity for me to have a closed transaction. Makes sense. Okay? So if, if they're a Facebook lead and, and they're a buyer, I'm gonna, I can either in the contact card, um, click on the individual mm -hmm. and say, hey, start an opportunity uh, with that person. So I click on the contact, I can start an opportunity with this person or say I can create an opportunity and say, hey, I'm gonna take this person, the type, they're a buyer. Um, and you know that's the client name. If if they're if they have a spouse that's also in my system, I could say, hey, this this is their spouse, or they're buying with a family member, or whatever. Uh, what do I want to call this opportunity? Any sort of custom tags with it? And they say, okay, hey, I'm not buying for another year. Okay, great. We're gonna put that estimated close date, you know, way way into 2022 um, time frame, 12 months. What's their budget? What's the estimated commission rate? You know, and what and they're in the opportunity phase of cultivate. So we're just starting that conversation with each other and that opportunity stage, I could say, Hey, they're just watch like they're a year out, not really sure what's going on or they're within about six months. or maybe I'll put them in a nurture mm -hmm. or I can put them into hot. If they're like, Hey, we're, we're pretty hot. If we find something. So you could define those as you want. Uh, and that's going to create that opportunity. Now, <clears throat> what I would do is you go inside of each one of these. So if I click on cultivate, Mm -hmm. I would click on edit stage and you'll see we got by default, we have watch, nurture and hot. Yeah. Now I can add some of these because some of you may have, you know, I've got watch, nurture, like what we call nurture, maybe in your team language, you call that warm uh, and you've got cold, you know, however, whatever your vernacular is, you can change that. Mm -hmm. They say, what position is this going to be in? Is this going to be the third one or whatever? And what the probability is, if somebody is in, if somebody is in this stage, what's the probability of them closing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this person is a, there's a 5% chance if a lead comes in and we're just a watch, we're just talking a 5% chance of them closing. Mm -hmm. This just kind of helps with your um, estimates of your production. Mm -hmm. But one of the big things that uh, most people don't do is they say, okay, hey, I get a buyer lead that comes in and it's under watch. Mm -hmm. Once I put somebody in there, I want to create checklists for these people. Yeah. So I want to come in, I want to say, hey, I want to add an item. 
so what you know if if I if I have somebody that has a two-way conversation with them about real estate and they're you know they're a buyer lead what's one of the first things I want to do for them All right so then that's when you're going to say you know set up save search All right and then I can hit save and that person's going to go in now if it's something I want the client to see that I'm doing for them, then I can say, hey, send them a client update. And what this will do is the next morning, it will send them uh, an email saying, hey, Sue, here's everything Jeff did for you today. Okay. I love um, that. So, <clears throat> so when I'm going through these stages and I'm creating these checklist items, I want to go through and just really kind of think about, okay, if I, if I have a buyer and they're in watch, what are the things I need to do to move them to the next one? And that's what's going to create my checklist. If they're nurture, what are things I need to do to get them to hot? If they're hot, what do I need to do to get them from the hot cultivate phase to getting an appointment with them? So you just got to kind of look through each one of these and say, I go to edit the stage and say, okay, what are the checklist items? Now on the buyer side, it may seem, you may not have a bunch of checklist items on the buyer side until you get towards, um, we're actively showing or we're negotiating. Um, and then especially once you get into to under contract. Mm -hmm. Under contract, this is where I would come in and I would edit my stages and I would say, okay, I've got somebody in escrow. Now I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, open up escrow, remind client to send, you know, whatever. So send in their, their earnest money deposit. You know, all those different kind of things, I can create my checklist for escrow. And then now, okay, now we've, we're in the inspections phases of our contract. Okay, now there's some checklist items I need to do for inspections. I need to call and make sure they got a CO2 detector. I need to call and make sure that they've got the water heater double strapped. Mm -hmm. right? You know, all that stuff that we, we know we need to do, but this is really how you're gonna put your business in autopilot, so to speak is put those things in here so this stuff just doesn't fall through the cracks. Um, and so I would go through each one of these. And if you've got more things that you do during an escrow that you want to customize, again, you're just going to go to edit stages. You can add a new stage in here. Okay. Jeff, are there preloaded checklists? That's a really good question. No, um, but I know that you can find those. Um, now, what I wouldn't put in my checklist is this is not where your escrow checklist goes mm -hmm. as far as the documents that you need to get. That is going to be in the actual opportunity um, where the documents tab. This is where you're going to see, you know, under contract, this is where, you know, this is my market center's um, required documents to close is. Okay. So it's different, uh, we, we, you know, we think of it as a checklist, but command speak, those are documents. This is checklist. Can you take us to here slowly? Cause I had uh, two different people ask that. Um, so you went to the little handshake icon on the left. Yep. Cool. Cool. What do you do next? So if, if I, if I want to create somebody, um, if I want to create an opportunity from brand new, I'm going to click create opportunity. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is where I'm going to say, you know, which client is it now, if I create them from a contact card, this same process, I can do it from a contact card mm -hmm. uh, and it's automatically going to fill them in. But if not, I just start typing in their name and it's going to grab that person. Okay. Got it. And then I say the estimated close date. This is when, you know, you and I have a conversation and you say you're six months from now. So I'm going to go out here and say, okay, six months plus inventory is tight. So let's just say three more months and we're going to close, you know, on the 29th. Okay. okay. That's, that's just my estimate. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, what's, what's their budget. Okay. Um, you know, buyers agents in my area, we're averaging two and a half percent. Um, I'm going to put them in the cultivate phase. Um, and their hot, you know, nurture watch, whatever it is, hit mm -hmm. create. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to show up right here. Got it. Okay. Uh, as either a buyer or a, a listing, or if you guys are doing leases, you know, it show down here. Got it. Um, <clears throat> now, when I click, if I want to 
uh, modify my checklist for these different things inside these opportunities, I simply just click on them. So any one of these I click on, if I click it, you'll see it here. So these are the different, you know, buckets mm -hmm. for Cultivate. These are different buckets for appointment, active, under contract, and then closed. So this again here, you know, like, like you probably have a really good follow-up plan for somebody that's closed, mm, right? Yeah. So if you do, then I would just go into edit stage and say, okay, they closed. And then now we have what's called legacy. So legacy, so I've closed that transaction. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag them from closed, move them to legacy. And when they do, I'm gonna create this checklist and I'm gonna add an item and I would say, you know, uh, add to, um, you know, their home anniversary smart plan, you know, or mm -hmm. birthday reminder smart plan, or, you know, whatever those things are that's like, hey, once somebody's close with us, we've got a list of three or four things that we really want to do. Um, and you put those in. Got it. Now, what you have to remember is that when I create it for the buyers one, so I go through and I say, okay, hey, I've got all my buyers ones done. You still got to do that for listings too. And then for leases, if you want it. Okay, so because what the, the checklist items for my listings are going to be different than for a buyer client, right? Okay. So uh, listings, I think most people, we kind of, for a listing, it's a little bit more intuitive. We know like, okay, hey, when I, when I get somebody that's, I've got an appointment with them for a listing agreement, right? And we met and then now we signed the listing agreement. So we signed the listing agreement and like, like this individual, I have a listing agreement with them. We're not active yet, but I could go and I could create, um, I could edit my stages and I could say, okay, when, when I get a signed listing agreement, what are the things that I need to do before we start showing, before it's active on the MLS? Well, I'm gonna need to um, order sign, right? Um, and then I say client update, because I want to make sure my client gets notified that I ordered their sign. Um, I want to, you know, put, uh, very small put, right? Put on lockbox, okay? But the client doesn't need to know that I put on a lockbox, okay? And then I would say um, uh, input into Zillow or whatever, right? Uh, but, I, but I want to make sure anything marketing related, I want to make sure that my client knows about um, post on Craigslist because it's 2002. Right. So any of that stuff, I could say, hey, I want I want my client to know about it. And then my client will get an email. Um, David put in a really good um, link inside of there. Uh, ideas at Cato.com. This is where you can come in and uh, and put ideas. So something that you think would be a good idea. So this import export of opportunity checklists. Um, this would be a great thing. Like if uh, um, Smart Plans, you know, has a library. It'd be great if there was opportunity checklist libraries. Um, so if you like that idea, just click that link that David put in there. You can also go to ideas.kbd.com and search for ideas that you like. Just log in with your KW email address and vote it up. See, so I just voted it up and now we got two, okay? Um, and that's where the product development team really looks for this stuff. Because if it's if it's a, doesn't matter how great of an idea it is, if not enough people vote for it, it's not gonna get the attention that it should. So sidebar there. I love that, dude. Um, but any, any sort of questions on this, but re re really, I mean, so that's where, um, so you're gonna go with notifications, you're gonna look at your contacts, you're gonna go to your campaigns and you know grab anybody that's a lead that came in and you're gonna put them on a smart plan. Um, and then you're going to uh, you know, look at your tasks that need to be done. And then if you've, if you've processed all that stuff, and let's say it's, it's only been an hour, um, then that's where I would go into my lead generating activities inside of command. Um, and uh, we've kind of covered this before and we'll go deeper into this um, uh, as, as we move forward here in the next few weeks. But what I would do is 
um, come into designs. And I would do two things. I would go and I would um, go to create a social post and I would come in and say, okay, um, I don't necessarily know if I would post this every single day. It just depends on how active you are on social media. If you're somebody who's, you've got an engaged audience and you're posting every single day, then, then go ahead and just keep doing that. Um, me, I, I probably post every few days. So I would just probably post something about real estate once or twice a week. Um, but if you go into lead generation and holiday greetings, this is where I can come in and I can post something about, hey, you know, Super Bowl's coming up. Um, I could put something in here and, and let's say I were to do it in stories, I could use it. And then I could put in there, you know, who are you rooting for and do like a poll on Instagram, right? I can do those different types of engaging sort of things. Um, or I can, I can do a Black History Month in my stories where, you know, first I say, hey, it's Black History Month. Uh, with my KW branding on it. And then the next, the next story image is, you know, something about um, uh, uh, a big moment in history, you know, or a person uh, of color in history that I want to share. Um, so I can go through and do those different types of things. So that's a great, um, that's a great point, dude. I, I love how you incorporated social media on the day to day in the morning, because it should be part of your business plan. I love that. Yeah, I mean, and there's lots of, I mean, you can come through here and there is so many, um, you know, you have just listed, you have, uh, probably my favorites are going to be inside of the holiday greetings and your neighborhood snapshots, just letting people know, here's what's happening, you know, in Glendale. <laughs> or here's Glendale. What's happening. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, or here's what's happening, you know, and, and if you farm, you know, a few different marketplaces, I would, you know, I would just do. Uh, an updated one for that one city on Monday and then the next one on Tuesday, the different one on third, you know, like that. And so oh, just, Jeffrey, how did you get there? Oh, <clears throat> we go to designs mm -hmm. and here's a common mistake is people go to designs and they'll say, man, there's supposed to be like hundreds of templates, but I only see like one or two. Mm -hmm. um, and what this this bar at the top, you have to, we kind of gloss over this, but it says my design templates. So yeah. that means these are ones that I have personally saved myself. This is not the library, okay? So if I come in here and I click on these different things, these are my ones that I've modified and saved. Mm -hmm. If I want to create one, I'm going to always, inside a command, if I want to create something, it's almost always going to be this blue plus, plus button. Okay, then I would say, okay, am I creating a print piece? Am I creating something that's going to be an email, like, you know, like, like a MailChimp kind of a thing or whatever, or a social post or a video, what have you. And so I'm going to say it's social. And then if I'm doing it for a listing, I would say import photos and types from a listing. But if I'm just going to create general social stuff, I'll just do social, hit next. And then that's where it's going to bring me in here and show me uh all this information um so that's there's there's lots of other things in here too like some of you don't know about your email signature you know some people want to like hey i want a cool looking email signature just come into business basics you got some of that you got some of your social branding like if you need a facebook cover um you got your facebook cover picture you want a, a cool looking one here here's one um so like if i click this i just hit use I can come in here and change, make this, you know, if I click this DBA thing right here, I just hit replace logo. It's gonna swap out with my market center one. And now it's saved and now I just download it. And now I can, up, I can um, put this to high and download it. And now I'm gonna have a whole new Facebook background, you know, cover photo. So all that stuff is is right here inside of social um, in designs. So that's I where I'm going to do all that stuff. Yeah, very very simple. The, the team's doing, you know, almost every day. There's new stuff in here. It's it's great. Uh, they're doing they're doing a, the 
our advertising marketing department is robust and it's it really shines in these different areas um, but yeah you see your open houses all that stuff i like that man they've done a very good job i think the only thing we need to do when we have this information is is use it in, in a way that connects with our audience better that's all yeah well we got like just a couple of months or a couple of minutes left, you know, so knowing what you know about designs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and we know there's a lot of different things that we can put out um, in our social channels, right. As real estate agents, mm -hmm. what would you recommend me as an agent? If I say, Hey, Tristan, I don't know what, what content should I be putting out? It's a great idea, man. It's interesting that you should ask that question because I have something to share with you. Um, so I have these calendars that I create for my team and then I share them with everybody, but I create them every quarter and I, it's their prompts. So if you see what's today, the fourth, yeah. So if you go to fourth to the fourth, you can see it alternates between Y S or S T A Y right state it's an acronym that i created so that i could remember what the hell i'm posting mm. right? and so it's sell teach advice you and it circulates through that so that we can connect with our audience um, more authentically instead of just posting crap here and there and so if today if let's say you're going to do this one this is just a prompt like advice well ask your eyes what what your industry can do better right it can be a post it can be a video and going over to, to the next day, a hobby you love and why you love it. Ask your audience too, what do they love? And then it goes to sell. Selling is the easiest thing we do. I mean, dude, you saw yeah. designs. It was everything almost about selling. Open house, just listed, just sold, right? So these, these I use as prompts that I create. I take time to do this for our team. So I give it out. So the thing that I'm gonna tell you is two things. It's along the lines of what you're saying you've got to set some time to do this in the morning, right? It's got to be part of your business plan. That's number one. And then the other part is bring a part of you into social media. Because if you don't, then you're just like everybody else out there. What's setting you apart? Like the reason I follow Jeff on social is because I want to know more about him, right? But if he's posting the same crap everybody else is posting, then then I don't give a crap. So we're, two questions. One, where do I get a copy of that? I'll send it over right now. Hold on. So if somebody's on Facebook or whatever watching this, where would they go? Do you have like, you know, I uh, no, like getting people to try to spell your name, right? But so I, <laughs> I just posted it to uh, to the chat box and then I posted it to our command. Uh, there we go. Great. Uh, do you have an email newsletter or something, bro, that, that you send this stuff out to that people can subscribe to? And I do, man. I'm building, I'm building a website. It's getting there. I like how you prompted me and on everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, put that in there. All right, Jeff, there it is. I posted it up. Perfect. Subscribe there. And then um, we can go from there. Jeff. I think um, next week, I'm excited about what we're teaching next week, which is the basics, how to get started. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, the, the great thing about, about um, you know, working with a technology company is technology is, is gonna ever keep changing, especially as we get into family reunion. There's so much new stuff that's kind of been coming at you and, and that, and that's all good. You know, every time we go to family reunion or we go to mega camp, you know, what's the one thing that that Gary kind of probably says multiple times, Tristan, as as we uh, you know before we leave the room. You know, it's it's always you know don't don't look at the the shiny objects, don't look at all that stuff that's out there in the vendor hall that are paying him hundreds of thousands of dollars to have the right to sell that stuff in, in, in the vendor hall. Um, it's like, hey, don't look at that. Go focus on these on these few things um, for your business. And I think that's that's one of the big things is there's there's a lot of bells and whistles. There's a lot of stuff that command can do. But I look forward to kind of taking us through some of these basics to just say like, hey, let's let's make sure we got solid bunkers for our business built around these few little things. Um, and we can go deep in some of those few ones 
Um, but you know, command is was built so that it can do uh, almost everything that most KW agents want to be able to do in their business. That doesn't mean your business is going to look completely different from the person that's in the cubicle or the office next to you. You know, you could be 100% FISBO driven and thinking, I don't need command for anything. When in reality, there's a lot it can do to help leverage your FISBO business. Um, and then you have somebody that's, you know, doing doing business that's all Facebook leads, you know. So um, we really want to kind of di dive a little bit deeper into that and how it can help you. I love that, man. And I think just getting started in general, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, where do I go? And the last time we shot a... Uh, beginner's guide to command it uh, it did it's still doing well it was like in mid-summer and so much has changed since then because it's changing so fast so i think that one will be well received we're going to go through just where where to start where to typically go what the little icons on the left are that could be like a, a whole day class jeff but we're going to try to cram that into an hour so which it's Good luck, Jeff, because I'm just here to talk. You're the tech yeah, guy. Right. I got to get your job. Yeah, dude, you're the tech guy. I'm the talk guy. <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's what I get talk. for paying attention in, in school. TT. TT. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. brother. Have an awesome day. Thanks for joining us, everybody. <laughs>